What's going on guys, Ryan with Jedi Patrol, back with another video today. We have the Hot Toys Return of the Jedi. Speeder bike and scout, let's check it out. That's right guys, we are back. Hope you guys are doing well. We've got a ton of videos lined up for you, including this one, we've got Illusion Iron Man, which I don't know if I've already released at the time of this recording. We've got the Arena Suit Boba Fett Toy Fair exclusive should be here. Actually, while I'm recording this, I'm probably already working on the other video. Anyways, it's gonna be awesome. Can't wait for that one. Let me know your hype for the Arena Boba Fett because it's already it's already waitlisted and the waitlist is full. Uh, they who shall not be named. That's kind of crazy for something that's not released yet. So there's that. Uh, but I did get the scout and uh, speeder bike here. The scout troopers. It looks. It's just. I, I, I'm super excited for this one because it's Star Wars. Obviously, it's another vehicle for the collection, which is cool. And um, I also have the. Uh, <clears throat> and obviously, I have the Mandalorian version of this. And I don't know how many of these I'm going to get. I definitely wanted at least one. Probably going to get two. We'll see how that plays out because I got a pretty decent amount of space in the new collection room. But uh, shout out to Pop Collectibles. This is where I got mine. If you guys were wondering, there's a link in the description below and a discount code down there for you as well if you want to check them out for your day one orders or whatever else you might want. All right, but uh, let's check this out. This is a huge box. If you've got the previous Mandalorian version of this, one's gonna be, I imagine it's gonna be very similar, um, but it's a very large box and I can't wait to uh, check it out. So let's go do that. We've got box right here. Quite, quite large actually. Uh, MMS 612 Scout Trooper and Speeder Bike. So you can get either the uh, Trooper by himself or you can get the Trooper with the bike. Obviously I decided to go ahead and get the bike because you know what? Uh, you know, we, we just, we gotta do things around here. You know what I mean? Gotta just get all the stuff, get all the boxes, make all the all the displays. Uh, here we go, that is nice. All right, so we might need a second one of these. We might need a second one of these. That's, is a, that's a pretty cool display, not gonna lie. Although the one from The Mandalorian with that scene with uh, Jason Sudeikis uh, was pretty sick as well. Uh, this is my first time taking a look at this. It's still got all the plastic bits on it. Let's check it out. We've got some uh, some shrubbery from the Knights Who Say Nee right here. We've got some shrubbery going on here. We've got a bunch of other little things. I don't know what those are. And uh, we've got our trooper right here. Let's get him out of here. Oh, trooper. Definitely super excited for that one. Uh, and we've got our bike underneath. So we got that and that's the only other tray. So I was curious about that. So let's go ahead and get this guy out of here and uh, see what we're working with. So hope you guys are doing well. I would love to hear from you if you are picking this up, if you're getting the uh, trooper alone, or you're getting the bike set, or, or maybe you're waiting on this video. I don't know. This is a whole lot of stuff. Now this is a pricey piece because you get all this stuff. So, I mean, it's got a little higher price than if you were just to buy the figure by itself. Um, we got a speeder bike here. Uh, we've got this. I was super hyped for this. The little sniper. Oh, man. I am. This is a super cool. Anytime I get new weapons in Star Wars, that's cool. Even though it's an old weapon from an old movie, uh, there's the things. But we've got hands. We've got our, our canisters back. We've got our uh, backpack deal here that goes right there on the bike. We'll deal with that. Uh, we got our uh, control arms. We've got display stands. We've got trees. We got we got all kinds of stuff. So I'm gonna get all this stuff out of the box. So let's talk about the speeder bike itself first, and then the diorama base. We'll kind of get into that. And I do have, just for those wondering, I do have the Mandalorian version sitting right here. So we can see, is it exactly the same, or is it just, uh, you know, it, it, are there some differences? We'll, we'll kind of figure that out in just a little bit. But the speeder bike itself, it wasn't too terribly difficult to build. Uh, I'll kind of zoom down here. Uh, you do have to add a few parts. One, you've got to add the controls right here. Those those guys, and you do have one extra, there's, there's two different molds. Uh, you get one extra of each, like you would like a, a, a wrist peg or something like that. Uh, you got the control arms you've got to add, the hoses right here you've got to add into that. So you've got that going on. And then obviously you've got to add this Satchel back here if you want to, which I think you kind of makes sense for this particular bike. And then obviously we have the diorama base, which is a separate piece. Other than that, it comes assembled, which is very nice. And if you have assembled in the past, if you have assembled the sideshow version of this bike, you know that you pretty much, it's like a Lego set that will 100% break on you and fall apart. So nobody wants that. But this bike, it, it's if you own the Mandalorian one, 
you know what to expect. It is essentially the build quality, the weight, the materials, essentially exactly the same. Uh, there are some differences, mainly in the, there's, there are some mold differences. There, there are some, some differences. The paint applications on this one versus the Sideshow one, are, this is just clearly superior. And the build quality is clearly superior. So if you buy the Sideshow one, just be prepared to be annoyed and just, just, just don't, okay? Uh, but the, it is quite a sizable piece. Uh, the uh, Mando one obviously is going to be exactly the same size. Is it the same mold? We're, there are certainly some similar pieces on it. We'll take a close-up look at it in just a second, but just for those wondering, look for yourself. It's very similar. Uh, there are differences uh, to be had for sure, uh, mainly the seat. Uh, you can, we'll kind of zoom down here for you guys. Uh, the seat area, uh, there are uh, some molding differences here. It's got more of a, a sculpted seat, uh, whereas here it's more of a smooth flat seat. Obviously, paint differences. The controls are in the pretty much the exact same spot. Uh, so there's that. There are differences in like buttons and LEDs and light up. So there's only two right here for this guy. And there's like five or six over here for this guy. Uh, obviously, you've got three different style uh, buttons here than we've got here. Uh, and we're missing a button here that we have over here. So there are differences, but generally same mold, same sculpt, same everything with different touches. There are some different touches. And if you wanna be accurate to the film, I think that makes total sense. Uh, and it makes sense that, you know, the Mandalorian version would be similar to this one because obviously it's Empire. Um, but there, there are some differences, even back here on the on the actual seat. I'm not sure how much I can actually zoom down here. Even back here on the seat, uh, you can see that there's a mold here and then there's a slight little mold here, a little difference uh, uh, right there. Uh, paint applications, tons of weathering throughout, and there's probably more differences. Uh, when I spend some more time with it, I'll probably notice some more. Um, and and I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm noticing here on the uh, on the front ailerons here, if we can get to this guy. Boom, there we go. Flipping things upside down, you can definitely tell some differences as well. Mainly in this middle section, you'll see a little, a little cog gear going here that you don't have here. And uh, you've got like the, uh, these little, hoses and things that are on this one that are different on this one. I mean, it's just differences, but like I said, generally the same. If we come down to the front, you can see some differences uh, on the front as well. Uh, but like I said, generally pretty much the same. Now, taking a closer look at this particular version because that's the one we're here to review. Um, let me get that one out of the way. Let's take a look at some of the, the details on this guy because honestly, there's a lot of paint applications going on here. The uh, the Sideshow one uh, was pretty much a flat brown. There was some like edging, dry brushing and stuff going on uh, on a lot of it. But <clears throat> taking a look at this one, since this is the one we're here to talk about, <clears throat> taking a closer look at this version, uh, it's got a lot of nice paint applications on it actually. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll zoom in here, but I want to show you like the, the level of detail. There's some absolute texture going on here that we didn't see with the Sideshow version. There's absolutely some texture going on with the Mando version as well, but this one's obviously Return of the Jedi. This one's going to be the epic one. I, I can see more people buying this one than the previous one, but you know, that's just all personal preference. But uh, the paint applications here, we got rubbing going on here, on here. We got, I mean, just, just age and everything where this guy's been running through the, the uh, force of Andor, especially on the front. Look how much battle damage and, and just wear and tear he's had on this front, uh, front ailerons. This is absolutely pretty, pretty epic. And, and you can see it's just very well done. On the underside, Again, everything is like a matte finish. So I don't think there's not a, any gloss going on here. So this is definitely weathered. It's definitely been through, uh, you know, it's, it's paces. Uh, I would like to see maybe some more paint applications to the hoses. That might be something that, or some dry brushing could be added to just give it some more depth. And that might be something I'd do with this one. Um, it's just one thing that I think they could have done something with. And I, it might not be screen accurate, I don't even know. But um, I, I think some that would add a little bit more depth to it. Uh, the uh, the uh, blaster down here on the bottom uh, swivels. It's got a hose right here. It's got a nice gold paint, gold and black going on there. And then you, obviously you've got your control arms, which you can move around uh, and do whatever you like. So they connect here, they connect here, and you've got a hose that goes in here. Um, so there's that. Now it does have the magnetic feature on the uh, stirrups right here. So it does have um, the circular magnets we gotta add. We saw those in the unboxing portion. You do have to add those, they're not, there is a left and a right, make sure you put in the right one. I don't know why it matters, but it, 
appears to. And then on the back, you can open up these guys and uh, open up and check out the engine, which is, I'm gonna try and do this. This might be kind of tough. It's kind of tall. Um, there you go. We'll see if we can zoom out a little bit. Um, yeah, so you can see what's going on there. Very, very nicely done in there as well. So I dig that. So it does come with a diorama base, which is right here. So we've got to deal with that situation, which we're going to have, if I can find out where the heck I put it, uh, a, uh, a flight pole stand thing situation where we saw, yeah, there it is, uh, that we saw with the, uh, the Mando version as well. Uh, so we'll get him out here. And it literally just pegs right right there, pegs right in there. So just screw that in there. The diorama base, I like. I like this quite a bit because if you could absolutely use this with just the figure and have the bike, I don't know why you'd want to do that really because it's got the, I don't know. Maybe you could put this, no, I don't, I don't think you could. This is pretty much the only way you can display the bike. Um, but I do like it if you didn't want to display the bike, which would be kind of weird. Uh, the diorama base is pretty stinking cool. Uh, so we saw something similar to this with the uh, Leia and Wicket two pack, which this is definitely a nicer piece than when we saw that one. That one we saw like additions to the square base. Uh, this, I feel like it is just a little nicer piece. Uh, but taking a closer look at this guy, you've got all these little ferns and stuff you gotta add. There's uh, multiples and you got extra ones, so that's cool. Uh, you can see a mold line going here where it's like a second piece, which is perfectly fine. But I, I like it. You've got like moss and stuff growing on here. You've got dirt, you got some stone. Like it's a substantial piece. It's a nice little tree stump going on there, fallen trees and branches and just, it's it's nice. I like, I like this. It's start, and uh, Hot Toys would give us more stuff like this. That would be awesome. Nice little slate stone and stuff going on. So I do dig that. And that is where the, uh, the flight pole for the bike pegs in. But let's go ahead and take a look at the figure. All right, so we've got our trooper out here. I've got the display base that it comes with. We've got our E11 sniper rifle. Pretty sure I got that right. But we got our, uh, our blaster pistol, we got a bunch of hands, and yes, I have the Mandalorian version so we can compare and, and check them out. But let's first take a look at this die. This, this I say diorama base, but it's really not. It's just a normal base. Uh, but it does say Scout Trooper uh, right there. And it's got this removable thing, which I don't, I don't really understand this because this looks like a big old pile of turds. Like it's just a brown base that makes no sense. So I guess you should just attach it and make it look nice. Uh, it does come with a normal waist grabber, crotch grabber deal. So there's that. Um, but anyways, there's that. The uh, the amount of hands you got a couple of relaxed hands are actually on the figure already. For those who are curious, we'll get him out here for just a second. Uh, and then we've got these guys right here. So we've got uh, two pairs of fists, which are nicely done. There's pretty much little to no paint applications on these, which makes sense. They're just gloves. So we've got a couple of pairs of fists. We've got some uh, pistol blaster holding hands. Oh, and also um, uh, uh, grip hands for the bike. I guess we'll call them that, grip hands for the bike. Uh, we got some like sniper rifle hands going on here. And this is actually the the pistol blaster one. It's always a weird one because it's 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 like these two fingers out and those in, it's just, yeah, it's a weird thing. Uh, but you do have this. Uh, which is pretty nicely done. You can see the weathering they've got going on here as well. So that's pretty nicely done as well. But uh, the, the the cool piece has got to be this, like right? It's got to be the sniper rifle because uh, if you wanted the previous uh, version, if you got the Sideshow version, which I do have somewhere in storage in a box, I do have the Sideshow version of this guy as well. Uh, this is, I'm, I, I hate to even say that I own the Sideshow version. This is so far superior to that. This is like owning a, an actual six scale figure and then the Sideshow one, is like, I, I, I hate to see a Hasbro figure or a Mego figure. It's so, uh, it's just not the same. It's not the same, right? Uh, so this would be like getting a classic, like proper taco truck taco right here. And then the Sideshow one's like Taco Bell. So sorry for you Taco Bell lovers out there, but this uh, blaster rifle is super awesome. And I am glad we were able to add it to the collection. So uh, very nice, nice little scope action we got going on here. There's brushing and wear and tail and dry brushing all over this guy. It is actually very, very well done. Nice little strap so you can uh, sling it over your shoulder if you care to do that. Uh, I very, very much like this. And uh, this might be one of my favorite weapons in the Star Wars universe as far as 1-6 scale figures. Like this, this may be up there uh, with one of my favorites. 
So uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of this one very much. So I can't wait to pose this up and see what we can do with this and uh, have some fun with it. But the figure itself uh, does have uh, this guy on the back, which just uh, slides onto the belt. I have not attached it as of yet, but there it is. Uh, and then we've got him right here looking all kinds of awesome, I think. Now, some people I have seen uh, have complained that maybe it's not as much weathering on this or uh, detail on it versus the promo photos. Maybe, but I don't know that that's a bad thing. I mean, it's actually quite well done. I really don't have any complaints about it. Uh, as far as the weathering goes, there's weathering all over this guy. So you've got weathering, you know, up here, you get weathering down here, you get weathering on the actual helmet. I mean, it's got plenty of weathering. I really don't have any complaints about that. You've got weathering down here where this part would flap down and get the insignia. Yeah. I mean, it's plenty up there. I really don't know why anybody would complain about that, but people like to complain and gen you know, I will too from time to time. Um, nice there scratches and dents and just all kinds of stuff going on in the back. Obviously the belt is where uh, you would pin this guy right there, but posing these things tend to fall off and they're kind of a nightmare. Um, and you can tell it's just very well done, even down on the boots. If we go down on the boots, it's very, if you own the Mandalorian version, it's gonna be very similar to that thin, like I wanna say like windbreaker style material. It's very, I mean, Dude's got a broke ankle. I'm just saying it's very, very poseable, which is very nice to, uh, to have. And then on the, the uh, underneath of the shoes, you got some mustard yellow gold, you know, boot bottoms down there. So definitely way less weathered and dirty than the Mandalorian version, but that makes sense, right? That makes sense. Uh, he's on a planet with a forest, you know? Uh, as far as Ben goes, you can hear, I don't know if you can hear that. There's a slight, you can feel a little slight ratchet in that knee. A slight ratchet, uh, double bend on the elbow, plenty of range of motion there to do whatever you want to do. And then on the ab crunch, uh, this is where you're going to have some issues because it's got so much padding. In fact, you can see it. So I think this would be a case for the fat suit to come off. Uh, so I will most likely be modding mine because I mean, you can see it. It's just, it's, it's very, art, very, very limited in the range of motion as far as that goes. Uh, it just, yeah, it's, it's very limited going forward. So I think that fat suit's got to go. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, as far as the lower, it's got plenty of split in the boots, no issues with that. And all these uh, attachments are on here via elastic band. So there's that. And head, I mean, you can look up, you can look, look way up there, it's on the ball joint and do whatever you want with that. Uh, comparing this one to the Mandalorian version, drastic difference. I mean, way, way different. And it should be, they're on different planets, right? Uh, let's get you looking up a little bit more so I can give you guys a comparison. Vastly different. And I would say definitely in the paint application, the molds look different as well. And, and uh, make, if you look at the chest plate, definite mold difference. All right, so you got it. I'm trying to do this with two hands. You've got, uh, you got this one's just much longer when it goes a little further down. This one's short and he's got this cummerbund padding section in here that this one doesn't really have. So it's definitely difference in mold. The, the uh, uh, I guess whatever this garment is, um, loincloth, no, nah, it's whatever the garment is, uh, is definitely more narrow than this one. Uh, obviously the, the armors are different. So you've got different armor here versus this one. And then uh, the boots are pretty similar. Yeah, I'd say the, they're, they're fairly similar. Uh, helmet wise, you guys can make the judgment call on that one. They're, they look pretty similar on that one. Go to the side, you can see, again, pretty similar, other than the paint application, obviously. So the, the armor itself is definitely different. Uh, there's different pieces and stuff all around this guy, and then obviously the weathering difference between them, uh, which I think makes total sense. So I'm actually pretty stoked for all of this stuff. The question is, what's it gonna look like post up? So let's find out. So we've got our scout trooper here posed up with the speeder bike, and I gotta say, of the two, if I had to compare this particular Scout Trooper with the Mando Scout Trooper and Speeder Bike, they're both quite fantastic, but I, th I think I gotta go with this one. I think I do. Um, maybe it's nostalgia, maybe it's just paint applications, maybe it's the color of the bike that matches Return of the Jedi versus the white one from uh, Mando. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's this freaking Sniper Rebel. I, I don't know. 
but I, I like it very, very much. And uh, of the two, I think I would I'd give a uh, give bonus points for this guy. I mean, he just looks awesome. And with that uh, sniper rifle, it just looks all the more uh, more awesome. And I do like it. But I, I will say it, it definitely is going to require the um, the fat suit to be removed and modified. Uh, the torso has got almost no range of motion in it. And you know me, I like posing things. And to get him really crouched down on that bike, fat suit's got to go. So uh, we're going to do some modifications to this one. And uh, we're definitely going to make it look even better. Uh, one other thing to note, the feet. So as awesome as the feet are and the material to be able to... Uh, angle or angle angle them if I can speak correctly angle them uh, for the bike uh, the ankles are they have extenders on them they're a little weak so I found myself having to balance them multiple times uh, not like where he's gonna fall over but it, it it it's not like your regular stormtrooper which pretty much they just stand up and never fall over uh, this guy it's gonna take some uh, take some tweaking but man does he look good look at the detail there and the coloring. I mean, just just all kinds of awesome, and I'm very much appreciative of uh, Pop Collectibles for getting this out to me so fast. But it's um, it's quite good looking. And of course, you know, with the diorama base back there with the uh, with the uh, speeder bike, it, it looks as it looks just as good. Uh, although I think I'm probably going to need a second one of these. Probably going to need a second one. I, th I I hesitated on buying a second Mando version. Um. I'm probably going to get a second one of these. We'll see. And I do have the indoor Leia and the Wicket and all that kind of stuff packed away somewhere in the warehouse. I uh, haven't quite gotten everything unboxed yet, but um, she's going to look good on this one as well. So that should be a lot of fun. So I wanted to do a pose with the Scout Trooper on the display base, doing a little Captain Morgan's pose. It, 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 you don't have a whole lot of range of motion in that torso, which is kind of, kind of frustrating. Uh, but he does look quite fantastic. Again, with the rifle, probably the my favorite accessory in here, even more than the bike. Uh, I very much like this guy. Third is, I've got him up on this base. And again, those ankles are a bit finicky. It's going to take you a minute. If you try this, um, I would recommend using the, the uh, waist grabber or something or some kind of display uh, support because he's, he's going to fall over. Um, but he does look quite fantastic. But what I would like to know from you guys, having seen the two scout troopers side by side, like, do you have a preference of the Mando one? versus um the return of the jedi one and you know so let me know in the comment section but I, I i'm leaning towards this one i really am but let's get him on the bike because you know that's what the hell he does so we got our scout trooper on the speeder bike looking all kinds of awesome i think uh this this is one of those where you pose and it takes a very long time to get something where you're actually happy with so this is good for this particular video but uh, this is definitely going to require some tweaking, and it's absolutely going to require the fat suit to be gone. So it's, it's just, it's it's a requirement. Uh, it was totally unnecessary for this figure to even have one, so it's definitely going to be modified. And once I get that done, then I think we can get some pretty stinking cool poses uh, on a speeder bike, as it should you know, should be able to do. Uh, but just straight out of the box, just just not going to happen. So a couple, uh, couple thoughts on this. One, uh, I do very much like him on the uh, the darker color bike versus the, the Mandalorian bike, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, it's got decent range of motion uh, in the joints, uh, the torso pretty much non-existent. I was able to put the sniper rifle in between the straps on the back where the satchel is, uh, so that was a nice touch. Uh, and then the magnets are just as weak on this version as they were on the Mando version for the feet. So they're pretty much just... You know, it's hit and miss on uh, on getting that done. Uh, the magnets are, uh, they might as well just be non-existent, to be quite honest with you. So, um, yeah, that's one of those things. Uh, diorama base, I very much like. I think I like this diorama base better than the Mando version. Uh, maybe it's just an indoor thing. I'm just going to like that one. Um, but as far as just the, the overall details on the bike, uh, I think the paint applications are beautiful. I love the matte finish. I love there's not any gloss on it because there really shouldn't be. Um, but I, I very much uh, am enjoying this one, and I'm glad I was able to uh, to pick one up. So, uh, final thoughts? Uh, I like it. Is it worth the asking price for retail? Uh, it's pricey. Uh, it's significantly. I want to say it's like fifty or sixty dollars, maybe even a little bit more than the uh, the Mando version. Don't know why. 
It's essentially the exact same figure. And then the Mando version came with a Baby Yoda, so that was that. Um, but, you know, I don't get the, you know, they don't ask me my thoughts on this before they do it. Um, but would I get this one over the Mando one? Yes. I do think you'll be able to eventually pick this up on like a free shipping or something like that. There'll be discounts because it's an expensive piece. And typically the expensive pieces sit around a while because of budgetary reasons. And if we think about this one versus like the Arena Suit Boba Fett, which I'm super hyped for, um, you know, more people are going to go for the Fett than they're going to go for this. But for those diehard original trilogy trooper fans, this is an absolute beast of a figure very much like it uh guys if you want go ahead and subscribe that'd be a great thing to do if you want to support us on patreon please do that we have a hunter life-size helmet giveaway going on in the patreon support group uh over on facebook so definitely check that out uh jetta's death star and as always click what you like see you next time